Hi, I'm Harry Reeder, Senior Pastor at Briarwood Presbyterian Church. I have the privilege to serve on the Council of the Gospel Reformation Network. It's a ministry devoted to the proclamation of the gospel of saving grace in Jesus Christ and its glorious blessings in justification and sanctification. I'm here with one of our council members, uh, David Strain, and David has just taken the ministry at First Pres Jackson. So I thought before we get any further, it would be good for you to meet David and David, for you to get me up to up to speed on uh, how things are going. You've stepped into that pulpit this year. Yeah. And uh, what was it like becoming the pastor of First Presbyterian Jackson? I guess you know, I mean, I'm sure you do, that that was kind of one of the three or four or five key churches that helped the right. PCA uh, come together uh, right. in the early 1970s. And now the Lord's called you there to that pulpit. Right. Yeah, it's over. It's overwhelming at one level. It's a it's a large congregation. It's a significant congregation that has had a succession of very significant ministries. I'm just a wee guy from Glasgow, and I, it, uh, you know, I I don't know a lot, and so it's it's overwhelming. I love to preach the word of God, and it is a it is one of those places where when you say look at the text, every head bows, and there's the waves begin yeah. to beat on the shore as people turn the pages. It's a beautiful yeah, sound. I call that Presbyterian air conditioning. It's just the light. You can hear the pages turning. It's yeah. a testimony to Ligon Duncan and Derek Thomas's ministry 17 years, 12 years prior to my coming, that there's an appetite for the Word of God and for the gospel of grace in the pews of our congregation that make it a thrill to preach. And so, it's daunting and was particularly daunting in the, the first weeks of my ministry. But after a while preaching there and you get this sense of hunger for the word, you, it helps you become, helps me become self-forgetful. I want to feed the flock. They want me to feed them. I hear about it if I ever do anything other than give them Christ and give them his word. Yeah. It's a joy. Yeah, it's a church that really believes and thrives on the primacy of the pulpit ministers. You know, David, uh, it was kind of interesting, and I think I've got this right. The church, of course, Ligon, uh, God calls him on to RTS, but you had already recently come there as yeah. the missions pastor, That's right? That's right, yeah. And so they then looked as was normal in that church. They start looking outside, but then they said, I mean, this is the way the elders told me, they said, why are we looking outside? We've got the guy right here. Right. And then they turned inside to right. talk to you. Was that a surprise? And if yeah, so, yeah, how did you handle it? And well, I mean, when they called me to be the missions pastor, I thought it was one of my own elders playing a joke on me when I got the call. Yeah. He could have knocked me over with a feather. And, and so when they began to talk to me about the senior pastor role, I, I, I just had no categories. I didn't know what to make of it. Um, I had already been preaching regularly at First Pres, and so was excited about that part of it. But the scale of the ministry, it's a large staff. We have, I think we have 84 elders. That is, that's all new to me. Yeah. And that's pretty terrifying. And, right. and um, so when I, when I was called, they brought me, they, I was actually in my study and the search committee were meeting downstairs and the executive minister, Ralph Kelly, came up and got me and brought me downstairs and brought me straight into the search committee meeting. And the chairman said to me, you're the guy and I burst into tears. Um, I, it was absolutely overwhelming to me. And not fear, just the sense of the weight of it, and right. the call of God, right. and the confidence that God's people had, were investing in me was, was humbling and surprising and exciting and, and things I don't have words for all at the same time. Yeah, I shook hands with Frank Barker, and I, after they were doing a kind of a write-up on me coming to Briarwood. I shook hands with Frank Barker. We were standing out in front of the sanctuary, and I turned around and looked, and I realized the ministries, the legacies, the challenges, mm. Mm. all the things that were there. My, I, this doesn't sound all that spiritual, but I said, 
what kind of fool are you <laughs> uh, to be here? And then came a flood of relief where the Lord, you know, where the Lord just kind of, what I'd said many times before, um, if I've called you to it, that means you can't do it on your own. Right. Right. But if I've called you to it, that means you don't have to do it on your right. own. Amen. I'll be with you. Amen. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the great things, uh, for those of you listening, that um, Gospel Reformation Network, we celebrate the fact that we're colleagues and partners in gospel ministry. I know for myself, First Pres Jackson, the pastor before Dr. Duncan, was one of my mentors and the chairman of my ordination council, Dr. Jim Baird. I used to sit down and talk to a previous uh, pastor, uh, Reed Miller, all the time to ask mm. him questions. Mm. And then, of course, I had a great partnership and colleague ministry with uh, Ligon Duncan, and now it continues here. Folks, that's one of the great blessings of the gospel. When you hold fast to the gospel, that glorious truth binds people together Amen. in the glorious privilege of ministry. So we've got some more for, for you from the Gospel Reformation Network. Thanks for joining us.